Revolutions are meant to bridge inequalities. But the information technology revolution has brought in its wake a new divide, the digital divide. And cutting across this divide are the authoritarians and the liberals, the proprietary software people and the free software people. However, what cannot be gainsaid is that internet has compressed time and space as never before. But the politics of an IT-led world is yet to be understood. It could be the setting of the ideological conflicts of the future. It's a small world and is getting smaller. With the information revolution has come an economic and cultural upheaval, blurring borders and shrinking time and space. Satellites, mobile phones and the internet promise a network world that will move at the speed of thought. What sparks this revolution? Telephones, radio and television had already linked the world. But what gave a dramatic shift to information technology was the internet. A centralized web of computers, the net was originally conceived in the late 60s as a US defense project. 30 years later, after having traveled around as a user-friendly innovation, the World Wide Web was born. It was an innovation that fused computers with communications and made a global conversation a spectacular possibility. The rush to get connected had begun. What is it about this new technology that makes it at once so powerful and so accessible? For starters, it broke the bounds of cost, time and distance. Email, for instance, is not just fast, cheap and efficient. It's radical. It means sending a mail in almost no time, at almost no cost, to almost anywhere. In terms of communication, the net made it ridiculously easy for people to reach out to each other. The ever-growing popularity of online communities, chat rooms and discussion boards demonstrate how the web helps the people with common interest find each other. Here is a medium that combines text, visuals and sounds with a difference. In other forms of mass media, broadcast information that is, a few dictate the content for the many. But with the net, you are not passively swarmed. You get to choose your content. You get to shape it and to react to it. 
Because the web is an inherently interactive medium, everyone has a voice. The pace and spread of information can help draw attention to an issue, cost, or an event. Word moves fast and easy through the net, which is why it gives such a lobbying power to citizens and activist groups. It empowers them with the space to say, be, do, share, and sell. And that's a lot of power. As more and more people ventured online, a study pool of critical knowledge began to accumulate. And today, the public has access to an ever-widening range of expertise. Also, this radically affected business as usual by creating smarter and better markets and by making possible huge gains in productivity. A wired world offers small players a global platform. The IT revolution put India on the fast track to development. In this emerging economy, knowledge is the new asset. Cities like Bangalore, Hyderabad and Chennai are swiftly becoming centers for IT products and services. This industry has created employment for a new generation of talented young professionals, even as it rakes in revenues like never before. In a sense, the IT revolution has been connecting everything to everything from almost anywhere because it is the people who benefit from the net. This is the 21st century and in other parts of the world, satellites, mobile phones and the internet are rapidly transforming the way we live. But what difference does it make to these men? and the millions like them. And how do we ensure that far-reaching effects of information technology reach far enough? However dazzling the changes brought about by IT may seem, the cold fact is that these changes affect only about 5% of the world's population. We have seen that India is an established and world-class producer of IT. But how much of an IT user is it? In order for technology to be meaningful to everyone, it must be useful to everyone. In the context of a developing country, this opens up a series of exciting possibilities. Interaction with the government can sometimes be formidable. Something as basic as getting a birth certificate can be a complicated process. To some extent, e-governance puts people back in control. With options like computerized land records and market prices, crop information, public petitions, and various application forms available online, the potential for e-governance is tremendous. Put in place, it will make a faceless system more accountable and people-friendly. Today, people interact with the government for applying for a form, follow-up for a form, and delivery for a form. Today, in phase one, we've taken the first two aspects online. So they apply for a form online, they follow up online. Only the delivery is offline. So typically for a birth certificate today, they apply online, they get a confirmation from the taluk office online, giving a date and time for which they have to come, they just go on that day and collect the form. I mean, we did a rough calculation of the type of saving that it had. The earlier system had about a cost on the system of about 290 rupees to get a certificate. Today it is 90 rupees. So you know, you're saving money on every aspect and each of this amount is significant for the villager.
The internet has facilitated distance learning, which brings quality education to those who seek it. With IT-enabled schooling, it is now possible for a tribal child in Jabua to put a CD in and walk through the Taj Mahal in Agra. The interactive multimedia experience can change the very process of learning. It can fire the imagination. In an unevenly developing country, telemedicine can be the vital link between specialists and the people who have little access to quality health care. Today, it is no longer always necessary for the doctor and the patient to be in the same room. It is possible for, say, a patient sitting in Siliguri to consult a cardiologist in Bangalore and receive expert diagnosis. If you go just 20 kilometers away from any metro, there, are, there is no medical facility. So our desire is to take heart care facility to the rural areas where large number of people live there. Now the only barrier at that time was no super specialists want to live there. Now what we realize is that super specialist doesn't have to be there. An ordinary doctor can do extraordinary things by telemedicine connectivity. So we have proved that uh, the only reason why a doctor has to touch the patient is if you are going to operate. If you don't need to operate on the patient, you don't need to touch the patient. And if you don't need to touch the patient, you don't need to be there. You can be anywhere. As long as you have the wire, you can reach them. Because healthcare interventions are, uh, decisions are taken based on medical history, which is given by the patient by the interpretation of data which can be transferred and images which can again be transferred. So you have got, you surround yourself with all the computers, you have a TV, you see the patient, the patient can be in Bangalore, he can be in Tripura or he can be anywhere in the world. The impact that IT can have on livelihood is perhaps the greatest illustration of its power. For instance, in this coastal village of Pondicherry, fishermen receive daily oceanware reports from the US Navy's public website. These reports are then translated into Tamil and broadcast at regular intervals over the loudspeakers. Those fishermen tuned in can then make profitable and safe decisions about setting out to sea every day. Being able to access this extremely relevant information on a regular basis has greatly reduced the risk the job involves. Computer-aided design and manufacturing technologies can make a big difference to rural artisans. Terhold, for example, a Bangalore-based organization works with craftspeople, especially women, who make Kolapuri chapels. The possibilities for artisan sector is kind of uh, enormous. The first thing is right now, of course, everybody is using a website and putting up a product online marketing, many people have started. Um, for instance, South Indian Producers Association is a federation of small producers and they put it up on the website and their current concern was how to receive uh, credit cards and receive the payment. That's a simple e-commerce where you do online sales. That's one way. The other way is to put up everyday development, new products, new colors, range. All you need is a digitized camera and it, you can put it up on your site. That's the biggest thing, that blessing that artisan can have.
Sukanya is from a small village in Tamil Nadu. When a local farmer's crop was threatened by a disease, she saved him much time, money and heartache by sending a simple email describing the condition to the agricultural college. They mailed back suggesting a remedy that ultimately rescued the crop. Recognizing the inadequacy of telecom infrastructure in rural India, Sari provides connectivity through WLL, a wireless in local loop. This venture, for the first time, seeks to prove that bringing IT to rural India can be a commercially viable scheme and needn't be a trade-off between people and profits. The same dream of bringing affordable connectivity to the villages of India is shared by the team who devised a mobile access device called the Simputer. Independent of mains power and designed for shared use, the Simputer will use smart cards to personalize it for each user. With a built-in modem, attached screen, and a variety of rural applications, including micro-banking and public health, the Simputer could go a long way in making a positive difference. While access is one of the barriers to connectivity, language is another. In the beginning days of the advent of computers, computers were restricted to the upper strata of the society. And hence the fact that computers were English machines didn't really matter. But today, the computer has become democratic in its operation as well as it has percolated down to middle class and upper middle class. This has really brought around a requirement for the computers to be localized in the sense of the language of their interface as well as of their interaction. This is also true at a higher level, that of having tools, software tools, which could handle various languages. For a country like India, which has got many languages recognized, as well as regions like the European Union, which has got a number of languages which coexist, these issues have become very prominent and urgent. Using technology with imagination has been made much easier with a new exciting movement called Free Software Project. Unlike proprietary software like Microsoft's Windows, Free Software leaves the source code open to everyone. Anyone can tinker with it, modify or improve it, and then share the results with others. The driving idea behind the project is that the instinct to invent and share is a better innovation than licensing and copyright. This has been amply proved by the runaway success of Linux, a free operating system that can do everything Windows can do and much more. The energy and versatility of IT are boundless, which is why it is so important to draw everyone in. The digital divide creates two unequal worlds, the connected and the isolated. To truly bridge this divide, we need to battle old inequalities. Fundamentally, we have a whole range of divide, what I call as a da-da-da divide. 
economy divide, that is the rich poor divide, the urban rural divide, the caste divide in this country, and the to have to and not have divide. So digital divide is only a natural extension of that economic divide. So what we really need to do is imaginatively use IT to bridge every one of the divide. Good old days people used to say, a public transport bus bridge the caste divide much better than all the pronouncements of the government. So similarly, a PCO quickly bridges a whole bunch of divide, which is partly economic divide, which is policy technology divide. Maybe things like kiosks could build that divide a little better. But ultimately, the rich poor divide or the economic divide is the bedrock on which all divides are built. So what is important is a kiosk or a PCO or a shared services, a simple computer, a cheaper computer, etc. All these things would bridge the divide to some extent. But the real way to bridge the divide is to create more wealth and share. Technology cannot fix basic issues of survival and progress. And information is only one of many needs. Ultimately, technology is shaped by social systems, by people. And where we take this disruptive and wonderful technology depends on us. Even as we come to term with information technology in all spheres of our lives, a new revolution is looming on the horizon, the biotech revolution which is already making waves in several parts of the world. Join us and let's make that revolution together in the next episode.